Thanks for the response. Carriage ride. <laughs> well, cool. Is this anyone's first time to Maxima Island? Film a film. Yes. Awesome. Welcome. And welcome back for those of you who have been here before. Always fun. Always fun. So my name is Luke, as he said, but of course, more importantly, out in front of us we have two wonderful horses. To the left is Elvis. Or we say hi, Elvis. Hi, Elvis. And, and over on the right is Hogan. Or we say hello, Hogan. Hello, Hogan. And there are engines for today. Lots of fun. The first point of interest on your tour is right over there on the left. That is Dow's Market. Dow's Market is the oldest family run grocery store in the nation, opening originally in 1884. There's a Dow's two down the street as well. Doing quite well. Pretty fun. Hello. Hello. Thank you. See this girl right here. Okay, <laughs> So over on our right, you'll soon be able to see Marquette Park. Right over there, the statue dedicated to Father Marquette in the center was dedicated in 1909. Father Marquette was an early French missionary who came to the island during the later 1600s. He later set out to explore the Mississippi with Gillette. The park was also used as barnyard and gardens for the troops garrisoned up at Fort Mackinac. Fort Mackinac was originally constructed in 1780 and completed in 1781 by the British during the Revolutionary War. It's one of two still standing Revolutionary War forts. The other town is St. Augustine. And on our right, mm -hmm. you can see the American Fur Company retail store, which also serves as the Dr. William Beaumont Museum. Dr. William Beaumont, he became famous because of his <laughs> insights and observations into the human digestive system. In 1822, Alexis St. Martin, a young French-Canadian fur trader, uh, accidentally shot himself in the stomach. Ooh. Yeah. Now at this time, um, it would have been fatal, but fortunately for him, Dr. Beaumont was able to save his life. Unfortunately, however, he left a hole in his stomach about the size of a golf ball, from which he conducted over 250 experiments, and he found that enzymes were the leading contributor to digestion instead of uh, stomach muscles, which was the commonly held belief at the time. But Dr. Boma is actually quite famous. He has lots of things named after him, ranging from the hospital in Royal Oaks, Michigan, Beaumont. all the way down to Beaumont, Texas. All the same Beaumont. And on our right, you can see the United States Post Office of Mackinac Island. It's a very unique post office because it's the only one in the nation that has never delivered a piece of mail. Awesome. Never. No matter what the weather is, you have to come get your own mail. Crazy. And over on our right, you can see the Stuart House City Museum there. The next building up here on our right as well as the Community Hall, both of which were headquarters for John Jacob Astor's American Fur Company. Now, John Jacob Astor, he is said to have been America's first self-made millionaire. Between those two buildings in the 1820s, he sold over $3 million worth of fur, which is quite a lot of fur if you think about it, because the average fur was going between 5 and 10 cents a piece. Quite a lot of fur. Three to five million. And on our right, uh, behind that garage door right there, is where we keep one of the few vehicles we do allow here on the island. That's where our fire engine is. So we do have a fire engine, we also have an ambulance and a police cruiser, just in case something were to happen. Horses only go so fast. <laughs> and on our right, you can see the iron fence here. It was constructed in the building behind it. That is the Benjamin Black Smithery. It, along with the middle house here, are open 11 to 6 today. The middle house is probably the oldest house on the island, dating around 1780, with the original down payment of $100, made for by Edward Middle. And on our left, you can see the carousel shops over there. It's a unique strip mall on the island because it's the only one that doesn't have a fudge shop. What? The only one. We have 16 fudge shops here on the island, mm -hmm. and you can get free samples at all of them. If you get free samples at all of them, you'll have just about a pound and a half of free fudge, which is quite a lot of free fudge. If you enjoy it too much, you might end up over there. That is the Mac Island Medical Center. Do be careful. We have one physician that is stationed here. They turn out every three months. And on our left, are the Twilight and Windsor, these two green buildings here. The Twilight and Windsor were originally hotels, but now they're employee housing for the Grand Hotel. The Grand Hotel is the largest employer on the island at over a thousand employees, most of which are college students like myself, or they do come to us from different nations, ranging from Jamaica all the way to the Philippines. And on our right up here, you can see the white ticket fence. Behind it is Chambers Livery Table. Oh, you dropped your ticket? Okay. Oh. Okay, we can stop here, uh, quick, quickly. 
Oh, thank you. Nope. No. She got ran over. So up here on the right um, is the white ticket fence. That behind it is Chambers Livery Stable. So how's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Oh, good. Good. Always in the breeze. <laughs> Always in the breeze. Is that what you said? <laughs> well, awesome. So where's everybody from? Um, Labonia. Nice, nice. I'm from Ohio myself. Oh. Welcome back to the carriage. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. Of course, of course. All right, let's get going. Now, back to your regularly scheduled tour. So over on our right, uh, behind the spike ticket fence is Chambers Livery Stable. It's the oldest operating livery on the island. It's where our taxi barn used to be out of. But it's where we house our wedding carriages and hackney teams now. We have over 400 weddings here on the island every year. And we're turning on to Cadot Avenue, which is also known as Lovely Lilac Lane, because of all the lilac trees here. We have two lilac trees on our right and another one up here on the right as well. We have over 200 different types of lilac. They were originally brought over by the French to make it feel more like home. And we still carry out the French tradition of bringing two new lilac trees to the island every year. One of the oldest on the island is right over there. We got a cord by Michigan State to find out how old it actually is. It's over 133 years old. Yeah, which is really cool. Wow. And the building behind it is the Grand Cottage. The Grand Cottage is currently employee housing for the Grand Hotel. But originally it was William Backhouse Astor's house. And William Backhouse Astor, he was the son of John Jacob Astor from the American Fur Company downtown. But it said that John Jacob Astor never actually set foot on the island because he was afraid of water. And if you didn't notice, the island is surrounded by water. So it's a tad bit of a predicament. So uh, William Backhouse Astor is actually said to have ran the entire enterprise on the island. And in a sense of fate, his grandson was the wealthiest man to go down with the Titanic. On our left is Jack's Livery Stable. If you think my dog looks like fun, you should check that place out. They have drive yourself carriages. And on the left as well, you can see the Sushi Grand. The Sushi Grand is the newest addition of the Grand Hotel's restaurant chain. And along with the gatehouse, there are two of seven restaurants owned by the Grand Hotel. Last year was the first time for uh, the Sushi Grand. And a good depiction of Max Island is over on our left, the Tower of Turtles there. That is um, a good depiction because it, Mackinac Island was originally called Michelin Mackinac, which means the Great Turtle. And the spelling of Mackinac with a C at the end is the French spelling of that word, the Native American word. And then with a W for the city, that is the British spelling. So just pronounce it that way, it just spells differently. And on our right, this, this is Little Stone Church. The stained glass windows depict early missionary work done here on the island. And it is made out of limestone, all of which was quarried here on the island. Over there on the left, you can see the Mackinac Island Public Schoolhouse. They have about 80 students every year, ranging grades to kindergarten through 12th grade, with an average graduating class of 2 to 10 students. This year there were 4 graduates. And in the distance, you can see the Mackinac Bridge there. It does connect the I think, upper it, I think it's down there. The lower yeah, it's down there. Oh, over there, okay. Yeah. From Anchorage to Anchorage, it is 5.2 miles long, making it the longest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere. It is also known as the Mighty Mac, or the Big Mac. And on our right, uh, there's a White House on the hill. That is the Governor's Summer Residence. It is the honor of every Michigan governor to reside there when they choose. It has 25 rooms, including 11 bedrooms and 9.5 and bathrooms. It was originally a lawyer's house. He was from Chicago. He sold it to the state of Michigan in 1902 for the original construction price of $15,000. He put a clause in the deed, however, saying that if they ever wanted to sell it back to anyone, they had to sell it to someone in his family for that asking price of $15,000. No matter what the year was, I don't think they'll be selling it anytime soon. Now it is valued at over $4 million today. And on our left is the Grand Hotel in all its splendor. The circular part up top, that's my favorite word on the tour, it is the cupola. Everybody say those cupola. Is that a fun word? <laughs> so the porch in front of it is known as the Grand Porch. It is the longest covered porch in the world. It is 660 feet long. It does have light blue underneath the balcony. That is to confuse some birds and bees into thinking that it's the sky. So that they don't nest there. And it does work quite well. The Grand Hotel was originally constructed in 1887. And it had 180 rooms. Does anyone 
anybody want to guess, or does anyone know how long it took them to build the original 180 room? 180 days. 180 days? Actually, it's half of that. It only took them 93 days. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. About two rooms a day. Labor laws were different back then. <laughs> <laughs> and over on our left, in between those two balconies, you can see a seam. The seam is where they've added on to the Grand Hotel. From the seam to the left is the original portion. And then from the seam to the right is the additional portion. There are now over 385 rooms, each of which are uniquely decorated. Six of which were actually decorated by First Ladies. Which is pretty fun. So once the First Lady decorates a room, the style never changes afterwards. So did everybody see the seam in between the two balconies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, pretty cool. There were two movies that were filmed here in front of the Grand Hotel. This time for Keeps in 1946 with Esther Williams and Joey Durante. And the swimming pool out front was built for Esther Williams because she was an Olympic swimmer. And then uh, Somewhere in Time in 1979, and that was with Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeves. Oh, I remember that. So that's where this movie was from. I remember that. Summer time. You're staying there? And I saw Did I, have I stayed? Oh, are you no, staying no, there? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay, me neither. I was just wondering. <laughs> no, then, then they started yeah. advertising. Has anyone eaten there? Oh, cool. Did you eat any potatoes? I love their potatoes. Did you like them? Okay. Current, <laughs> I've stayed here four yeah. times. Does anyone else like potatoes? Doing yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I have a fun fact about the Grand and Potatoes. Uh, the Grand Hotel actually goes through 83,500 pounds of potatoes every year. Oh, oh, quite a lot of potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. Yeah. I'm sure each and every one of you woke up and thought to yourself this morning, wow, how many potatoes does the Grand Hotel go through each year? I was thinking that it was Good. Good. <laughs> well, now you know. Perfect. Louis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 83,500 pounds of potatoes. Quite a lot. <laughs> now, in front of us, that's Mandy on the golf shuttle. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Everybody say hi, Mandy. I did. Hi, Mandy. <laughs> so, uh, Mandy is on the golf shuttle. So, her job today is she's taking people from the front nine of the Grand Hotel to the back nine of the Grand Hotel. Uh, their golf course, sorry. The Grand Hotel's golf course. Uh, the front nine is known as the Grand Nine. And then the back nine is old. Um, Okay, right. It's along this pathway, uh, but to the left. It's in the woods, so we call it the woods. The woods. <laughs> the entire golf course is known as the jewel. It's actually the only golf course in the nation that you have the privilege of going from the front line to the back line in a horse-drawn carriage. It's not a 25-minute uh, carriage ride. And up here on the left, you'll soon be able to see a pile of rubble. The pile of rubble is where the Grand Stables used to be held. The Grand Stables are uh, where the carriages and horses of the Grand Hotel reside, of course. And about seven years ago, they realized that everything was crumbling from underneath them. The stables were unstable, not good. So they did have to relocate. And over on our left, uh, do you see the pile of rubble over there? With the rocks and yeah. stuff? Maybe? Yes. Okay, so that's where the uh, grass tables used to be held. And now they are over on our right hand side. There's a green and red barn. Do you see the green and red barn? Yeah. Yeah, so that is the new grand stable. Whoa. So the, uh, the grand stables. They do have a free antique carriage museum inside. It's open to the public until 5 o'clock p.m. And I would suggest going inside because while all of the carriages are antiques, they're all fully functioning. So it's very interesting. And uh, it's one of the few stables that I've seen that has a chandelier inside. <laughs> yeah. Now you might have noticed we've been stopping going up hills. That's for the horses. They're quite powerful animals. But like you or I, they get a tad winded from time to time. The two in front of us, Elvis and Hogan, they are Belgian draft horses. And you can tell that they're Belgians because they have tan bodies and then blonde tails and manes. And we also have Pertron draft horses. And the Pertrons will have a darker brown coloration, or they'll be completely white or completely um, black. Because um, when they're younger, they have the darker coloration. And then as they grow older, some of them have a color fading gene and they'll turn white with age. So, pretty cool. Sort of like humans. Um, these two are about 12 or 13. Yeah. Another one that we have um, is the bays, and bays are tan bodies with black tails and manes. And that's because they're a mixture of the Pertron with a standard red horse. 
The Belgians are of Belgian descent, of course, and then the Pertrums are and Bays are of French descent. Now you've probably seen a lot of uh, bicycles going up and down this hill. This is known as Grand Hill. <laughs> And it said that you can reach speeds of up to 60 miles an hour going down it on a bicycle. Okay, but we, we don't suggest you do that because we do have a speed limit on the um, island of 25 miles an hour. And, like elsewhere in the world, we have police officers waiting at the bottom with radar guns. And um, you can't uh, go too fast and they'll block you and then you can actually get a, a ticket. It's a reckless endangerment ticket and two points can be added to your driver's license. So, do be careful. So now we're going to continue straight up here, but if we took the pathway to the left, we would be going to uh, the back part of the Grand Hotel, Grand Hotel's uh, golf course. The first barn uh, that we will see, uh, right here, the white one, that is the taxi barn uh, for Mackinac Island carriage tours. This is actually home base for Mackinac Island carriage tours. And we have the only 24 hour a day, 7 day a week, 365 day a year, horse-drawn taxi service in the world. Which is pretty cool. So, right there is the taxi bar. So we do have horses here all year round. That's also where the veterinarians are out of. We have three veterinarians here on the island. Do you remember how many people doctors we have? One. One, yes. You can see where our priorities lay. <laughs> With the horses, of course. <laughs> now, in the distance, you can see a green and white striped carriage. Uh, the green and white striped carriage. Whoa. The green and white striped carriage, uh, that's the three horse carriage. That's what you'll be going on for the second part of your tour. It'll take you throughout uh, the state park and everything. They're actually the longest passenger carriage in the world, seating up to 35 passengers. And um, they're pulled by three horses, hence the name. Makes sense. And their horses are in the next barn that we'll be able to see in just a bit. We have 16 out of the 17 originally produced by Jayco Company. They're out of Indiana. And they also make campers and RVs and things. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll be taking you on the second part of your tour. Now you might have noticed, we have random paintings throughout the island. Uh, they're replicas of paintings, so have no fear. But they're from the Detroit Institute of Art, and they send paintings up here. Um, they send replicas of the paintings up here, just to encourage uh, artwork on the island and such. My favorite is in between the Twilight and Windsor downtown. It's um, the sunset on the Arctic. Oh. So the three horse carriage, their horses are in this barn up here, and it's in between the other two barns that we call it middle barn. And those are our largest horses, training between 2,000 to 2,500 pounds. Our largest horse is over 2,600 pounds. And then the next barn back there um, is our largest barn, so we call it Big Barn. And uh, that's actually where Elvis and Hogan live. So each morning, the driver will come in and get their team ready for the day. So I brush these guys out and then harness them and uh, make sure they're wearing their shoes, and you can pass this back. This is the horseshoe that goes on the front hooves of the horses. It has a metal insert with polyurethane around it, and um, they're put on by our farriers. Our farrier shop will be up here on the right. It'll have a black anvil on a white door, and it's right over there. That is our farrier shop. They're the ones who do shoe our horses and everything. Pretty cool. They do stay quite busy because we have a large drag horse herd. Um, our entire herd um, here on the island gets to about 385 horses. And our entire herd, um, all together, we have over 415 horses. Over there, that is the spa for the horses. So that's where they'll get washed off at the end of the day. And in the distance, you can see the uh, fence back there. That is a corral for the horses. So that's where the horses will go on their day off. And it's really cool. Elvis and Hogan, and all the horses will do this. They'll stand side by side together their entire day off. And Elvis will always be on the left, and Hogan will always be on the right. Yeah. The three horse teams do it as well. So they sort of look like little gangs going around. Uh, they get two days off a week. Mm -hmm. Yep. They work for about four hours a day, and then two days off a week. So, we're going to take a right up here, but if we were to take the pathway to the left, then we would be going to Harrisonville, or the village, and that's where three-fourths of the local residents live. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have just under 400 people who live here year-round, and uh, three-fourths of them live back there because it protects them from the harsh winter winds, and then it's quiet and quaint during the summer times and everything. Pretty cool. So this is the last part of the tour with me, and then you'll um, be up at Surrey Hill, and at Surrey Hill you'll transition to the three-horse carriage. Or station, does anybody have any questions? 
No questions. Wow. Are you from here? <laughs> I am not. Well, I'm here during the summer, but I'm not from here. I'm from Ohio, actually. Yeah. I'm from near Dayton, but I go to the University of Toledo. I study biochemistry. It's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Are you from near here? Uh, how here? So, oh, okay. Michigan. Cool. Nobody's told you that Michigan's superior, but Ohio's superior. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fun one. Other questions, comments, jokes, poems? <laughs> haikus. Haikus. I love haikus. Well, cool. So a question that we typically get is, um, how old do the horses live? Our horses, have we discussed that on our tour? No. Okay, I think so. So our horses, um, typically they live to about 30, uh, mid-30s, but they'll go into retirement mid-20s. And um, it depends on the horse, though, because the oldest horse on the island, she's over 39 years old. And um, she, they tried to retire her three times. But each time they tried to retire her, she refused to eat until she made her way back to the island. Yeah, because she loved it here so much. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Another question that we get is, uh, where do the horses go during the winter? And we don't keep the horses here on the island. Uh, we take them up to Pigford, Michigan, which is in the Upper Peninsula. And we do that because it's easier to bring the horses to the food once than the food to the horses multiple times. Because the lake does freeze over and everything. So we'll be continuing here. When they, when they retire, where do they go? Uh, they just stay in Pigford, Michigan all year round. Yep, yeah. When we get up to Surrey Hill, then um, you'll be transitioning from this carriage to the next carriage, the three-horse carriage. But there's no time limit on your ticket, so you're, of course, welcome to meander down to the uh, Grand Stables over there if you want to see the Antique Carriage Museum, or if you've got um, Butterfly Conservatory tickets, or if you're interested in getting a Butterfly Conservatory ticket, uh, then that'll be the green and yellow building behind this white gazebo over here. And uh, they have over 275 species of butterflies including the world's largest moth species, the Atlas moth. Pretty cool. That must be brand new. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Oh, yeah. If so, my name is Luke. If not, my name is Susan from Seattle. <laughs> Don't I look like a Susan? Your generosity is always appreciated, but of course never expected. I hope you have a wonderful day here on Magna Island. And we will be getting our photo taken up here on the left hand side. But I ask that you stay in the carriage with me until we get uh, to the silver steps. They'll be on our right hand side. And then um, you'll go through the door marked entrance up there. Uh, it's right in front of us. And then when you're ready for the next part of your tour, uh, you'll go to the opposite side of the. <laughs> little stable in between. Enjoy the rest of your tour and the rest of your day on that. Ready? How do I deal with the gun? I forgot. I don't either. I don't remember. Alright, so how are all you beautiful people doing today? Good! How about the rest of you? <laughs> Did you guys enjoy the first part of your tour? Yeah. Who's your driver for the first part? Luke. I have no idea who you're talking about. Luke Susan. I have no idea who you're talking about. Do you guys remember your horses' names? Hogan and Elvis. Right. See, I know the horses down there, I just don't know the people. Alright, so I'm going to introduce my horses quick. On the left, I got Bart. Everybody say hi to Bart. Hey, Bart. Hey, Bart. In the middle, I got Mike. Say hi to Mike. Hey, Mike. And the right, I got Bubba. Say hi to Bubba. Big Bubba. So, in the back part of the tour, we give our horses team names. These guys are called the Mafia. We got tons of good teams too. We got the Ninjas, what I call the Ninjas, the Orioles, which is the Black Horse, White Horse, Black Horse. I think that fits a little bit better. But I'm going to stop up here quick. We got something really important to talk about. Whoa. Alright, I need everybody to take a look to your right. Take a look to your left. Those are your emergency exits. 
<laughs> Something. All right, so the first part of my tour doesn't start until we get to the cemetery. So this gives me a chance to get to know everybody in my carriage. So I'm going to go by row. First row, where are you guys from? Michigan? We're in Michigan? Very rapid, all right. Next one, where are you guys from? Where are you guys from? Whoa. Do I gotta get out now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is the cow that I was born here? Are you a Buckeyes fan? No. Who, 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 who do you like for football? Nobody. All right, you can still get out then. Did you know there's 24 astronauts that came from Ohio? Yeah, what's wrong with the state that everybody has to flee the world? <laughs> Alright, next, where are you guys from? Houston. Houston? Flint. Flint? Okay. Next, where are you guys from? Okay. Next, where are you guys from? Jackson State Penitentiary. Oh, nice. <laughs> good. Are you on, how are you, how are you out? We got paroled. Oh, nice, good job. <laughs> Proud of you. Alright, last, where are you guys from? Oh, boy. Auburn Hills. Alright, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. So I'm from Granville or Grand Rapids, Michigan. Alright. I lived there for 25 years. I went to Grand Valley State University, went to Davenport University. I had a business and science degree. Now I'm just waiting to go to PT school. But before I go to PT school, I'm going to travel for a bit because I've been in the same town for my whole entire life. So last winter I was a dog mushing guy in Snow Mass, Colorado. Pretty fun job. I was actually at that job where I met two of the managers here at Mackinac Island Cater Shores. So I took them for a ride up and down the mountain. And during my tour, I gave a lot of stupid jokes. So they told me I'm a perfect fit for Mackinac Island Cater Shores. <laughs> I asked them a little bit about the job, what I'd be doing. They'd be like, yeah, all you do is sit in your butt all day long, tell stupid jokes, and people throw money at you. But I didn't take the job right away. Me and my friends decided to go on a big, long camping trip. And we started the camping trip in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. In February. Mm. It was one of the stupidest things I've ever done in my life. Cold? That was cold. And I slept in a hammock. <laughs> then we made our way to Utah. I stayed in Utah for a little bit. It reminds you, I slept in a hammock. There's no trees. <laughs> I had to stack picnic tables on top of each other instead of a hammock up. It worked though, for the most part. Oh, everybody be very quiet. Shh. Very, very quiet. Whoa. You guys look right here. We got wild tourists. <laughs> Please don't feed them. We don't want them to keep on coming don't back. Don't feed the tourists. <laughs> 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 she said I already heard that one. No. <laughs> All right. So you guys remember the Twilight and the Windsor from downtown? Yeah. Green and white buildings. So that used to be a cemetery. That used to be St. Anne's Catholic Cemetery. But they didn't want the first thing all your tourists to see is, hey, welcome back on the island, there's a big old cemetery. So they moved all the headstones up here. Now they left the bodies downtown, that's why it's so haunted. I actually had a lady in my carriage believe that the other day. She was like, well, what do the families think about you guys leaving the bodies downtown? I was just joking. <laughs> We have the oldest grave here, dates back to 1833. That's Mary Biddle. You guys remember the Biddle house? It's Edward Biddle's daughter. They're coming back from the mainland one day, crossing the ice bridge, and unfortunately, Mary Biddle lost her way. Now, by the time they found her, she was already too ill. She passed away the next day with pneumonia. She was only eight years old. Now, Edward Biddle got really depressed, got really upset. He didn't want this to happen to any other friend or family member on the island. So they gathered up all the Christmas trees and put them along each side of the ice bridge so people can find their way home better. They still do that today. Now I get the question at least once a week, usually it's from someone that's from Ohio. They ask me, what do you guys do with the Christmas trees? Whoa, when the ice starts to melt. Let them float away, what kind of question is that? <laughs> Ohio people. Well, usually they have to be a resident on the island to get buried here. Look over here, no any old pups can get buried here. 
any old putt. Get up. Get up there. Here on the left, you got the Protestant Cemetery. Now the oldest grave here dates back to 1831. That's Harriet Mitchell. Now she passed away at the age of 84 years old. That's twice the life expectancy during that time. Right, some people say she lived that long because she never got married. <laughs> <laughs> if you take a look to the right, you can see the Catholic Cemetery fence. See how it's really stony. Yeah, well, the Protestant fence is much more holy. <laughs> <laughs> Agatha Bill is also buried there, Mary Bill's mother. Over here on the Protestant side, it says alcoholic beverages prohibited. It doesn't say that on the Catholic side. <laughs> Over here at Post Cemetery, now this is where Edward Bill is buried. So all the Biddles are buried in seven cemeteries. Now this cemetery used to be by the fort. Now when I was by the fort, it had tons of wooden headstones. And unfortunately over time, a lot of the names got washed off. They weren't really good at keeping records back then. So out of the 109 graves, only 39 of them are known. Now that's exactly why the flag there is a half staff. This is one out of five places in the whole entire world the flag can be a half staff all year long. Now can anybody name the other four places? Wow, no one. What? Good job, you got the easiest one. Arlington, right? Arlington. 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 Alright, so we're going to talk to the G. Gettysburg. Mm. Are you looking up on your phone or something? She in? <laughs> Google it. So that one's Punchbowl or Pearl Harbor. And the last one's in a different country. France. Normandy. Yep. Get up here. Alright, you guys see this arch right here? Get up! What are you doing? Get up, up, up. This arch was specifically designed for the hearse we have here on the island. But if we got one minor detail, the driver sits on top. Yeah, I guess he thought it was going to be a headless hearseman. Indian War, the British won, right? Now, American, Native Americans, they don't like the British whatsoever. So Chief Wellington gathers up all the Native Americans, and they're going to take back the fort. Now, as they go do this, a guy by the name of Alexander Henry escapes. Now, he was held prisoner by the British. But him and Chief Wellington were best friends. They're blood brothers. Chief Wellington gave Alexander Henry a safe passage here to the island. So he goes up to me and he's like, I need a place to hide. So Chief Wellington brings Alexander Henry over here to Skull Cave. Yeah. Like, stay here, I'll pick you up in the morning when it's safe. Well, it's getting cold out, it's getting dark out, it starts to rain. So Alexander Henry climbs in the cave. Now he's pushing around sticks and stones to make himself comfortable. Well, when the sun comes up the next day, he finds out that it wasn't sticks and stones, it was actually skulls and bones. That was a burial site for the Native Americans. So that's exactly why Chief Wellington brought him back because he needed to be safe. He knew no British soldier would come near the cave because all believe was haunted. Now it actually took Chief Wellington four days to pick up Alexander Henry. What happened is when the Native Americans took back the fort, they found the British's booze and they got a little too drunk and forgot all about them. Back in the 70s, they had tons of hippies partying up in that cave. Now the state police got sick and tired of it, so they threw some dynamite in there one day and blew it up so no one can go in there. If you come here at night, you'll see smoke rising through the cave, and it's the hippies haunted pass. Alright, so is 
anybody going to Fort Mackinac? Am I bringing anybody to Fort Mackinac today? You guys are going to Fort Mackinac? Okay. What'd you guys see those stairs back there? So he's a Fort Holmes. It's the highest point on the island. Didn't they rebuild Fort Holmes? No. They did. It's not the original. No, they, they rebuilt it. Yeah, it wasn't here a couple years ago. Oh, it is just a mound. There's no building there anymore. The gate, and it's a mound. Is it they rebuilt it? No, that's what they rebuilt was the mound. Mm. Yeah, the actual building is gone. Mm. You can still see it land. I thought they were both there. Yeah. Nope. Mm. <coughs> well, when you go there, you can go up to the gate and you can walk up on the mound that goes all the way around the fort. All the stuff in the middle got burned. Mm. It's kind of impressive though when you look down the north side and see it. Once you get down by the fort, back and all. You can see the whole entire fort from up there, it's pretty cool. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Alright, does anybody know when the War of 1812 was? What's the point 1932. Eh, close enough. Of 1812. Did you guys know it started right here on Malcolm Island? No. Yeah. So at this time, the Americans had the fort, right? Now the British, they come from the north side or the far side of the island. And no one ever came from the far side of the island. So they come from the north yeah. side of the island, tell the Americans to surrender. Now, the Americans had no idea about the war. They had no idea of wars being declared. They were heavily outnumbered. So they threw them their weapons without firing a single shot. Now, between the years of 1812 and 1814, the Americans tried three attacks on the British to get the fort back. Now the first attempt, they go from the north side of the forest on the island, and the exact same thing the British did to them. But the Baron has by this time built Fort George, now called Fort Holmes. You can see the whole island from up there, and they saw him coming. Second attempt, the Americans did the exact same thing. Far side, north side of the island. Can anybody guess what they did the third time? South side. No, it was the north side. Exact same thing. They didn't learn. So unfortunately, all three attempts were unsuccessful. Now, who won the War of 1812? Uh, it was actually a draw. And the United States got states back like Michigan and unfortunately Ohio. <laughs> Louisiana. Hello. We didn't have those celebrations for uh, Pentecost, did we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, excuse me. You guys got a map? Yeah. How do I get to our truck? <laughs> oh, thanks. That's awesome. You know, when you smell horse, you know you're there. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, guys, so I'm going to be going down Break Check Hill now, all right? You guys remember where your emergency exits are? Yeah. Uh, sorry for the people in the middle. You're screwed. Yeah. Get up. Yeah, so as I'm going down these hills, I have a brake. As I fly the brake, it's taking a whole set of load off the horses. They're not pulling a single pound right now. All right, let me get a raise of hands for those of you who have never been to Mackinac Island before. A lot of hands are going up. That's good. That means I can make up whatever I want. Mm -hmm. For those of you who have been here, have you guys seen Sugarloaf? Has anybody seen Sugarloaf? Yeah. Huh? No Sugarloaf. No Sugarloaf? No. Well, you gotta go see Sugarloaf. Sugarloaf's right down here. Uh, Sugarloaf Road, that leads right to Sugarloaf Rock. Highly recommend checking them out. It's pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story about Sugarloaf. A long time ago, there's a chief. His name is Chief Wabatuho. Now, Chief Wabatuho had magical powers. But he got sick and tired of people in his tribe taking advantage of him. So he took off and came here to Madison Island to live here all by himself. 
Well, years go by, and I think these ten Braves. Now, they heard stories ever since they were kids about Chief Mamatuho and his magical powers. When they become of age, they want to go find Chief Mamatuho. So they're all 16, they climb in their boats, and they start searching and searching for Chief Mamatuho. Now, it takes them 14 months before they find him. Leader of the group gets out of the boat, hands him a big bag of tobacco, and asks him, can you grant us all one wish? We'll never mm -hmm. bother you oh, again. Oh, sorry, battery's gonna die. Dude, are swimming down there. Holy cow. Okay. Stay to snorkeling or something? Mm -hmm. That's gotta be cold. Yeah, Rick just said there are caves. You, you can go in caves underwater? Some of them you can go right underneath there, but oh, yeah. you don't want to go too far. That's a kayak. Yeah. 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 So this is the north side, right? The way north side? Yes. Yeah. See the bike trail around there? Yep. Goes all the way around. It's a nice bike ride, see it? So there's a lot of people doing like diving and stuff over here. Yeah. It's a lot of like, it's like shallow. Yeah, cool. No, no, no. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was like blessing. Michigan Governor's Mansion. Other than the smell, you'd never know it wasn't the ocean. Because <laughs> you can't smell salt water. You can smell salt water, you know? Yeah. Bye bye, Mackinac. <laughs> bye bye. And, uh, Beach and Bay. We always stayed on the top floor. We'd call him. He'd always have our room for us. Always. He was a nice guy. Yeah, to go in and, see him. and they had Caribbean people working there. And the woman behind the counter. Remember, we talked to her. Yeah. I can't wait to get home and see my family. And yep. you know, and, oh, winter's terrible. I'm gone when the snow comes. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> she was pretty nice lady. They shut down around the first of November. And we'd see her in the spring. Hi, how you doing? I said, well, how'd you enjoy home? Oh, it was great. You <laughs> went from your kids for that long. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty terrible. Yeah, she had daughters and sons. I think one of her daughters worked up here. And uh, up, up team Zay and grandkids, and that's all she talked about. During the bridge walk, there's one thing that 
goes on here that's really kind of disturbing. I'm going to assume it's National Guards that stand yeah, up here, up and you can see their rifles. And yeah, about, they're up on the about every, would you say, 300 yards on both sides is a police boat. That's a pretty sad state of the world affairs, isn't it? It's nice to walk though, because you can see right down through this break yep. over here. Did you know that, Patty? I don't need to see it. Thanks, you don't want to look? No thanks. All you gotta do is open your door and look straight down. No, I've done it a hundred times. No thanks. Okay. Yeah, I like the window and look. Yeah, I like the side better. The concrete side? Yeah. Really? Are you having a hard time because we're on a bridge? No, I'm, all, I'm okay right now. We're bought. See, we could get that island there. Yeah. That's big enough. Is that? Get that island. Yep. Yeah. You can buy it? Yep. Yeah. They're for sale? Yeah, but you can't do nothing with it. Why? Because <laughs> you can't build on it. Why? Because you can't have a sewage system or anything out there. It's all pristine property. Why can't you? It's just illegal. Well, if it's your property, I'm you not can buy the island, but you apartment. can't build nothing on it. It's not a park So, I wonder you why you couldn't. I'm sure you, you could. Have one family? We've driven back in there, I'll tell you, at certain times in the spring or spring or summer. It's got to be a billion birds. It's insane. Yeah. Huh. So there's what? Four islands out here? Big uh, islands, anyway. The big ones? One, two, three, and four. Yeah. yeah. Four. I come on bridge like this or like uh, Zilwaukee Bridge, I always think of the Romans. If you could go back in time and bring a couple of those road engineers that the Romans had, they love to see it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those guys knew how to build, boy. They didn't know how to make steel like this though, no. so they could no. never have done this. No. But they, they, they did make it. concrete. Yes. No. They made concrete that no. is so strong that it's hard to break it apart today. And it's mm -hmm. 3,000 years old. Yeah. yeah. First serious road builders. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that World War II brought to America. A General Eisenhower that realized if anything ever happened, oh, yeah. we need to get from the east coast to the oh. west coast as soon as possible. From the north to the south. And north and south. So that's when the expressways they started that building. The bridge authority. Them. Yeah, that's a bridge authority. He's just behind another bridge authority truck. Yeah. Going See that pay a toll over here? Yeah. Yes. You can't make it out from well barely. One of our great pictures with the Mackinac Bridge in the background is right over there in the cemetery. Yeah, it's much closer from this side. It is, yeah. There's a place on this side, you only see it when you're biking, where they bring equipment, food, and everything in and out. And the barges can fit right up in there, whatever boats they have. And that blue-green water is like 30 foot deep. All the time going there, we just wanted to take and go swimming right there, but I always had the feeling if you ever jumped off, you'd get impaled on a re-rod. Oh, yeah. 